Hey folks, it's Bud in Studio 8 at Sofa. And I'm wedging in between two photo shoots today here, so I'll be quick. I wanted to go over the basic functions on the back of the new Alien Bees DigiB unit from the Paul Buff Company out of Tennessee. And we've got a chance to run this thing through its paces quite a bit. And we do find a few things that you should know. And I think you should know them as a consumer that maybe is considering the first flash purchase but also as a consumer who might be looking to buy a second light in addition to an existing Einstein in their um, equipment inventory, or perhaps to replace an aging uh, original Alien B, which are still fine and awesome lights. Um, and so let's run through it. First, on the back, the digital controls can be a, a, a bit daunting if you're not used to them, but if you puzzle your way through them, in short order, you do find that they do make logical sense if one considers all the functions available to you on the light. Um, and I think they've done a very good job of getting these functions down to as few buttons as possible. However, like any piece of photographic equipment, it does matter that you take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with them. So that said, uh, again, I want to point out this, this button is not illuminated. I think that might confuse some folks right off the bat. It does illuminate the B. It's okay because the back is going to light up blue anyway, and you're going to realize it's on. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to notice the fan comes on. I do think that if you were trying to use this light strictly for, uh, for video, I think you would find that fan noise um, something that you're going to have to accommodate, probably with lapel mics, or maybe you're just not using audio. Um, so that's probably the first thing uh, that I think folks could find confusing, but once you know about it, it really isn't any big deal, which is this first button flash. And all this is doing is allowing you to get over here to the flash control. Now, it's really important to realize that right now, this is set up to be only a video light. That's right, I've turned it on and left it, over, left it from the last use um, as a video light. Right now, it's just running as an LED. You're saying, how could that be? The answer is because you can shut off the capacitors inside of here that make it become a flash. You're using less power, so perhaps if you're on a, a weaker power source, or if you're just running off of batteries like a Vagabond mini lithium system, um, it allows you to not use that function. It also makes it so you can't accidentally trigger anything. In fact, it even warned, warned you, the flash is off, silly. Look at that. It's even running it right on there for you to, help it, to be helpful. So to turn that on, which you only, again, you only have to turn it on if you had previously turned it off, is you're going to press and hold the flash button. And there you go. That's it. Now it's on. Now. Flash is telling you that it's on, and this little dot that's illuminated next to it, to the right side of the button, is telling you that the adjustment controls are going to affect this control. You'll find the same dot and the same means over here for modeling lamp, okay, frequency, and channel. Slave, that dot is doing something else. It's turning it on and off as a toggle, but we'll get there. So right now, because again, the blue dot is next to flash, I can just power up and down the power of the flash unit. And you can see we're at full power. And now I'm gonna go all the way down. If I press and hold, it gets a little quicker. It goes all the way down to minus six F. Now, if you're not used to these numbers, um, some people call them Euro numbers, but I think that's inaccurate. Really what's happening here is it's telling you on an F-stop scale, where are you in power level? You just have to understand that full power is zero F-stops because you haven't taken anything out of the capacitor. And if you go down, say, 10 clicks, right, you're at minus one F-stop. You're one F-stop or one stop less than full power. Recall that this is a 320 watt second light. So right now we're at 160 watt seconds. In an era where we're well past pack and head systems, most folks are using mono lights. They're not used to thinking about distributing power. We don't really think about watt seconds very often. So you say, why do we have to do it this way? The answer is because it's quicker and it's easier to think in f-stops because that's what your camera does. However, the light gives you more control than your camera does. Your camera gives you third f-stop control. So just recall that if you need your power to go up or down by a third of an f-stop to match your camera, you just go three clicks. But this also matches, for example, your flash meter that has 10th f-stop control. I tend to use the ones from Siconic. If I hold up my Siconic meter, meter the light, and read that right now it's three tenths of a stop less than where I want to be, I can just go up with my power, one, two, three. Just like that, and I'm done. That's it. That's the power control, pretty easy peasy stuff. The modeling lamp control, really you just have to remember, can it be on or off? 
And if it's on, what's it doing? It can be full power. It can go up and down in intensity with the flash power intensity, or you can independently turn the modeling lamp brighter or darker should you choose of an arbitrary value different than the actual flash power. To do this, you need to press this once that tells it, I want to be in control. I want these adjustment buttons to control over here. If you do nothing for a moment, just know that it's going to reset to flash because it assumes that the most common use function will be flash. So don't let that fool you. Go over here, and right now it's set to be full power. Now it's set to be off. The model lamp is off. If I go here, it's set to go up and down with flash intensity, and I'll show you that. Give that a moment, it'll reset back over here. And as I bring the flash intensity up and down, in this case down, the modeling lamp is dimming with it. I'm not sure how well that's showing in the video, but the modeling lamp intensity is going up with the strobe power intensity. If I go back over here, again, I hit it one more time. This is going to independently allow me to change the modeling lamp power. Again, did you see that behavior? The blue light went back over to flash, assuming that's the most common thing it's gonna change. I'll go back over if I need to, and I can independently, as long as that blue light is on this side, change the model and lamp power. I am doing so independent of flash. Folks say, when would you wanna do that? Candidly, it's not something I have ever done once in the entire history of the many, many dozens and dozens of Paul Buck products that I own. Um, we own about 20 Einsteins and about 20 Alien Bs, probably, probably a little more of both. Um, and I know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of folks using Alien Bs and Einsteins. Not one of them ever uses this function. But again, it's there if you need it. Please don't let it confuse you. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and turn that modeling lamp back on in full power. Look at that. Easy. I want to point out right now that my hand is touching the front of this light. It's warm. Warm. Less than a warm cup of coffee. And this thing's been running on full power the whole time. So that's pretty awesome. We're going to do a separate uh, video on just the heat output of this thing uh, with uh, a thermal camera, just to give you an idea. It's, it's really quite amazing, and we're very happy with that feature. Recycle. Simply put, when the light has recycled after firing, what's it going to do? Will it beep or not? Right now, with that set to beep, it beeps once it has recycled, not when it flashes, when it's recycled. Here, I can set it to dim the modeling lamp while it's recycling, and the modeling lamp comes back on once the light has recycled. This is not something I use very often. Um, I understand the recycle times of these lights, but for beginning users, you may find that beep exceptionally handy to slow you down in the shoot um, to realize how long it's taking it to recycle. It's also useful, again, once you start using a Vagabond mini lithium power system, because you know those uh, recharge times are a little slower because you're working off a battery. So that'll help you understand that pace and that cadence. The dimming of the modeling lamp itself as a recycle is not something I use because I don't like the lights to dim when I'm trying to autofocus in a studio. And if you're in a darkened area and the room lights uh, read the modeling lamps, keep dimming every single time you take a shot, that can be a bit sickening for your subject. But again, I do think it is an application and a purpose, uh, and I'm glad they uh, kept those features there. Uh, and then, of course, you can cycle to using both of these features, beep and dim, and then, of course, you can turn them off. I'll leave them off here. Slave eye is a simple toggle, on or off. Right now it's on, it's blue, it's illuminated. I can turn it off. Remember that slave eye is on top, giving you more of an omnidirectional uh, forward, backward, side, side to side view of the world. Again, often it gets blocked by soft boxes, but again, by getting it up on top, I think the performance is gonna be enhanced. We are truly impressed with the one that's on the Einstein. Uh, I haven't really used this particular slave eye yet to see its quality and intensity, but I'm sure it'll be just great. Um, the frequency and channel controls will only work once, of course, you've placed in your receiver unit that plugs right on the top here. I like they put a nice little boot there, uh, so if you're not using it, and um, it just keeps stuff out of those little, uh, those little holes. All right, that's not going in, but that's not necessary for the video. And, of course, the test button sinks on the bottom. Do remember that your um, handle down here is a ratchet, which is to say that if this starts to get in the way of the body of the flash, you can just pull outwards and twist it around, and it latches just fine. There you go. Basic functions of the Alien B. I'm just gonna flip this around really, really quickly so we can have the front, but I am gonna turn off the modern lamp to do so. 
I just want to point out that you have the four fingers of this original Balcar mount, which is a French company that made strobes. Um, but now, uh, of course, Paul Buff is the one that's using this mount. Um, these are fine. These are hooked. Again, that model lamp was running. My hand is touching this metal. Is it warm to the touch? Yes. I barely want to take my hand away, but I don't have to. No, you know, no biggie. Um, and then, of course, you have your umbrella mount. I will tell you that with all the umbrella mounts, you want to keep them a little bit snug down when you're not using them because, um, like any screw thing, through use, it'll come undone. So just give that little snug and you're not using it. There you go. That's the basic controls on the new DigiB. This is the DigiB 800. Thanks. This is Bud at Sofa. If you want to know more about us, it's thesofa.com. And have a good day.